Hi everyone, just want to point out that this is the end of the day. It's 8.30 at night. We've had a big promo day for Eve of Man and we uh, are already in our pajamas. We've had a, uh, an Indian takeaway, we've had a curry. You don't want to smell us right now. No. Lots of garlic and onion. There's, there's lots of onion but going on. it was on. good. It was tasty. Now, um, I'd just like to also point out the difference between our pajamas. You have very <laughs> posh pajamas. They're next. They're I, from next. The maternity wear from next. Nice. I have pinky in the brain <laughs> pajamas. Well, we could do start with mine. <laughs> that was a really good impression. Was, wasn't it? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over um, the world. What's that, the blind? <laughs> Try to take over the world. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's been the first day of really like proper repetitive chat. You know, by the end of the day, you know how what you need to say. We've kind of when someone asks, so what is even man? That's your your cue. Well, even man is. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I can remember the odd joke. You keep saying this, like that I'm the one with the facts and you're the one with the jokes. Now I see how I deliver facts. I don't see that many jokes from you. I think I made you laugh a lot today. You did. Pro unintentionally, I think. Unintentional humour. It's part of my shtick. Um, it is Eve of Man Eve. Eve of Man is published tomorrow officially, although it's basically out in all the bookshops now anyway. Um, people have read it. Some people have read it in one sitting, which is... Amazing. Craziness. Yes, so uh, thank you to everyone who's bought it so far. You know what I, I always think? It's crazy how something that's taken you so long to write and create can literally be read in a space of a few hours. That, But it would pain me more for it to take someone the same amount of time to read as it took us to write. Oh yeah, you don't want that, do you? No, no. don't, no, don't, no, don't no, no, try no. and do that. Um, anyway, G's done a, uh, a little Eve of Man Q&A. Q&A Twitter shout out. So I'm just going to just go through. Um, I'm, we're going to keep this short and snappy. Yeah, I want to go and watch Britain's Got Talent. Jessica Powell, how did you and Tom come up with the idea and decide to, uh, to write it together? G visited a, a friend who just had a baby and she told G that her... Everyone in her NCT group had boys. There we go. Oh, she's and so I came home and was like, wow, everyone in Becky's NCT group, they all had boys. Isn't that amazing? How, like, what a coincidence. And it just started off this massive conversation about what would happen. You know, does that happen a lot? Or does it, yeah, do, you ever get, do you ever get days where all of one gender are born? Or do you, could that happen? Is it a possibility? And, oh, imagine if only girls, uh, no girls were born for a year or for two years or for ten years. And, you know, pretty soon you'd be looking at the extinction of the human race because... There are no mothers. And that is where the idea came from. Uh, deciding to write it together, basically we uh, came up with the idea, wrote it down in note form on our phone. I think we were a bit like, oh, look, we should write that down, we should write that down. And then it was a very organic thing writing it together. I think it just, because it was a, from a conversation that we had together, mm. it just, it was done very organically that we decided to just write it together. Yeah. And nice in that way, rather than us going, oh, you really should pull our talents together, how to do it, how to do it. I think if we'd have thought about, you know, from a, if we'd have just thought we should work together because we both write books. Yeah. I don't think we would have picked YA as a demographic. I don't demographic think the book thing. could be as strong as it is. No, but we would have just picked, you know, we'd have been trying to find something that we both like. And so I think it was a very nice organic way of it happening. If Eve Man could have a soundtrack, what would it be? Oh. One song. I think something like... Ah, oh, there was one that we did want to use on the trailer. This is a man's world. Yeah, we did want to use it on the trailer, but we couldn't because it would have cost a lot of money. Copyright issues. So uh, we didn't go for that one. Although I do like the one we used on the trailer. Um, I think maybe something like The Civil Wars. Like a folky... I would like to do like a soundtrack inspired by you of man. Oh really, would you? Yeah. I mean, quite busy. Growing humans. That's writing the next book. That's true. Let's try and... Get it in somewhere. What's it like to write a book with your husband or wife? Are there any positives or negatives? Um, I think for both of us, well, you'd obviously had experience writing books with Doug, but I've only ever written books on my own. Um, so having someone else as part of that creative process is a bit weird. You go through it on a bit of a journey where you think it's the most amazing idea ever, then you think, oh, it's all right. And you're like, oh no, I've done this really badly. It sucks. I suck. The book sucks. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And then something happens, something clicks and all of a sudden it all makes sense and it just all falls into place. So when you're writing together, you have to kind of trust each other that you're just in that process and not doubt yourself a bit too much. 
becomes annoying if you're needy, I think, when you're writing. Yeah, you don't need... To you be just needy. have to know that you're both working on something together. Yeah. I mean, it's challenging. Yeah. Positives? Great for childcare. Great for childcare. Yeah, one person writes, the other looks after the kids. You can't write in the same room. Um, well, usually, there's one chunk of the book that we actually wrote at the same time. But we can't write in the same room because there's, Tom writes really fast and really loud. And G doesn't like it because she keeps an eye on my word count and I write a little I bit just, faster It's than so her. frustrating hearing someone like really type away those words. Anyway, if Eve Man was pl uh, made into a film in the future, who would you like to play Eve? I think someone like Millie Bobby Brown could play great Eve. We were saying earlier actually, it's really interesting how our uh, references, like image-wise, for the different characters. There are actually people, actresses that, or actors that maybe we grew up with, but are younger, like, but, but them are younger. Yeah. So it's younger versions of them. Yeah, like we didn't ever once say many Bobby Brown, Brown no. in our, when we were writing. But I think she, she would be the perfect, she's a great actress. Yeah, and she is. I think. Um, right age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, would be. If it were would in, be. When this point if if she signed on now. Yeah, she should be the right age. Oh! Megan Ann, who do you think did the most writing for the book? That's a good question, I don't know who wrote, wrote the most. I mean, we could divvy it up and check all the words, but... I would imagine it's G, because G wrote Eve, and Eve is, is still the main it's, character. But I would but say that it's very equal. It'll be close. It's very even, I think. But we never, we, we, we generally don't know, we've never checked. And I think the pace of the book and the way we told the story just kind of naturally evens itself out. Yeah, it? yeah, it does. So I, th I imagine it'll be quite close. Did you have the ideas ready for a trilogy before you started the first book? Yes. yes. We planned the whole thing as a trilogy. So we had an overall story that felt like it was too much story for one book. And so that was then split into the ideas of a, of a trilogy. So what our original plan for the story is going to end at the end of book three. And we just then work backwards. So right, well, if we are, if we have a lot longer to tell the story, what happens? What is the first so the overall story is three books, a big beginning, middle and end. And how does that work out? It's been mm. really good fun. I mean, it's very difficult writing a trilogy. When you're writing one book, by the time you get to the end, you can think, oh, okay, actually, if I say this right at the beginning, mm. it makes more sense at the end. Yeah. Once you've written the first book, and you, then you have two more to write. Well, if you have that idea yeah. at the end, or like in the book, book thinning, oh, maybe I should see this idea earlier. I think, oh, but I can't put it in book one now. Yeah, you kind of, otherwise you've got the whole lost scenario, where you're just asking loads of, making the reader, What's the happening? audience member, ask loads of questions, then you don't answer any of them by the end. Yeah. Who's better at sticking to deadlines? Deadlines, we're pretty good at seeing the deadlines. Yeah. I, 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 I like to think of deadlines as quite loose, flexible Guide things. Guide lines? Basically, we, we write a lot of books at the moment, so they're pretty lenient on us with our deadlines. There, are, there are deadlines that if we publisher. don't hit, then the book won't get printed or we have to move the, the, the publication back. And sometimes that happens. That happened this year for both of us because we just couldn't physically do it. But when you look, <coughs> not a lot of authors write multiple books in in a genres. year in across different genres so i'll have deadlines for the picture book <coughs> deadlines for the middle grade you go yep yep uh, i'll have deadlines for picture books deadlines for the middle grade novels and deadlines for eve of man and as well as everything else that's going on so sometimes those deadlines conflict mm. and mean that oh i'm actually in the middle of a novel right now so i can't deliver the picture book text uh, until yeah, and it's kind of working out what actually, what's the priority in that moment. So it yeah. might be that we have to kind of step away from Eve Man and work on something else before we get to the edits. Actually, that was one thing that we did. We wrote the first draft and then we both had to go and write different things before we could come back and write the second draft. Yeah, it was, it was hard. Like we had Eve of Man in and then I think I was doing Brain Freeze or the Creekers, the Creekers edit. Baby. You didn't have Mum yep. Have a Baby. So it was Eve of Man. The Creekers have Mum Have a Baby, then Eva Mad and it came back in, we did that, and then it was Brain Freeze, and you yes, just kind of go wonderful. through. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's challenging. Let's keep going. Um, oh, do you like to work in absolute silence, or do you prefer to listen to music while you work? Do you listen to some music sometimes? Don't you? Sometimes, it depends what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. Actually, do you know what? I, I find it useful. If we, like, when we were working, when the builders were here, I found it really useful to work with music on. Mm. Because you've just got that constant... Drowns out the drilling sound. Well, yeah, and it's a bit more of a controlled noise, isn't it? Mm. Especially if it's an album that you know well. It has to be very quiet, I think. 
Yeah. Sometimes I just put my headphones in with no noise, to be honest. You don't listen to any music, though, do you? No, but I don't like absolute silence. I like, I'd like, like, the TV on in the background. Or something, or, like, other people around. Mm. I think that's why I like writing in the kitchen, because there's always a bit of noise. What, the fridge going, hmm? Hmm. Doing it right now. Times times where you disagreed on a storyline, and how did you overcome that? Yeah, we have this, like, creative debates, and we'll think, well, maybe this... It's not really, like, disagreements. We will suggest an idea, and then that idea will inspire you to say, oh, yeah, but then if you do that, that can't happen, or if you do that, this could happen. And you just kind of work it out. I don't think there's ever been ideas where we're like, nah. Like, or like this, no. sh where I've thought this should happen and you've thought that should happen and we have to argue it. Well, I think you keep talking, don't you? If you're not, if you don't both, you know if you're not both kind of like, yeah, you're really enthused about an idea and you kind of keep talking until you are both enthused about it. Yeah. There's no point you kind of going along with an idea that you don't love, no, I think. you've got to love it. Yeah, so we keep going, really. There was a time where I uh, went too far. I admit that I went too far. She opinion. pushed it. She pushed the boundary. Pushed, it, pushed us the out. The idea was pretty <laughs> wacky. A certain idea too far. Tom told me to scale it back. I did. And then two weeks later, uh, it ended up in Tom's section. He stole my idea. It but got, It got edited out. Yeah, the editor was like, I do think it's too far. So that's fine. How much do you argue, Bicker? I think we go through waves, don't we? Yeah. You just, you snap at me and I take it and then I wait for you to say sorry. <laughs> By saying, are you going to say sorry? Well, no, because you've asked. I don't me. ever say that. <laughs> I don't need to. I just give you this look. <laughs> Your sister. <laughs> <laughs> when are the future books for the trilogy due for release? Well, we, we're we're planning two and three. Uh, we're, we're right at the end of planning book two now, so we'll start yep. writing that relatively soon. Very but we're soon. we're planning book three at the same time, so we're kind of crossing into the planning of book three. Yep. If all goes to plan, it will be out. Next year, year from now, book two, and yep. then hopefully the following year for book three. But depending on when we finish writing it, that is the plan. The plan is because we've done such a detail. A, a year gap. Detailed? Detailed? Details. Can't say that word. Detailed. 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 Uh, detailed. Yeah, detailed. We've done such a detailed outline of what um, book two is. It's going to really change our process in terms of writing it. Yes. I feel like my voice is getting lower because yeah. I'm getting more tired. Lots of people are asking about struggling together, disagreements. It's all been fine, guys. Maybe we get on fine. We're still here. What's it been like writing a, uh, a young adult book and has it been different? Uh, has it been any different from your other, uh, from the style of your other books? Yeah, it's very different, but I haven't really thought of it as being a, a, a YA book. I've just, no. I've just written, and I haven't really thought of any of my books being like specific for the for a demographic. I think when you're when you know what story you want to tell, you naturally tell it for the audience that is going to read it. And also, I don't know, I mean, like pigeonholing, like the best kids books are books that can be enjoyed by anyone. You know, that's why things like Harry Potter yeah. and. All the, all the greats, you know, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and Roald Dahl, that's why they work universally. And the same with picture books, you know, and I think the same with YA, you know, the, the really great ones can be enjoyed by any age group, really. For me, writing a young adult, it's much snappier. Maybe my characters go on a bit. <laughs> my other books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just kind of, because when you're dealing with like thoughts and feelings, and actually yeah. this book Although, is like a lot snappier anyway. Yeah, if it? I feel like paced. it's writing, you, it does feel like you're writing a movie. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's just constantly. You want to keep it moving forward. all the time, yeah, especially because yeah, yeah. you change characters in Eve of Man. You change the. Point well, of there's view. a lot going on in Eve of Man. There's a sense of urgency, isn't there? Yeah. So, so like, it is. It is a lot more like that. Um, whereas I do think maybe in the other books I write, people do have time to sit and think about their feelings a lot more. Proper They're not asleep. Proper snore fest. I've got soundtracks of mine. You do, I don't like it, yeah. Just, just saying. Yeah. Do you not like that? Oh, well, I, I can't do that for Mike, can I? You can have a soundtrack, yeah. Billy and me. Billy and me. He's can you an imagine if I did a musical see. version of Billy and me and that was a song I came Billy out with? Billy and me. Billy and me. He's in a movie everybody wants to see. Called Halo, Halo, Halo. Well done. That's amazing. You remembered that. Hmm? That's really good. Where does the day go, day go, day go? <laughs> okay. That's it, right. That's that. That's it from us.
Billion Made the Musical coming soon. <laughs> Not really, but even Man is out now. And thank you to everyone who has um, uh, bought it, read it, already reviewed it. Um, it's really amazing to get the support and, and lovely to see that people are really excited about it. Genuinely is. It really is. Um, I think especially because we are writing a different type of book to our normal the normal audiences that, that read our books. So, um, it well, it's been the lot. longest period of time that a book has sat with us. Yeah. So it feels really weird to kind of be handing it over. Yeah. Now it's in your hands. Yeah, cheers everyone. Um, happy publication day. Oh, happy publication day to you. Thought you were going to kiss me then. <laughs> <laughs> right guys, we'll just meet you later. Adios, bye! See ya.